Good morning, church. Great to see you guys in the building. Great to see you guys at home. Shall we stand in the building? Let's worship together. We've just had a beautiful breakfast together. Pastries, coffees, teas, refreshments. We're all full. We're ready to worship God. You can say yes if you want to. Let's just show. Shall we just pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the privilege of being able to gather together, Lord, in this building and in our homes. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come at the outset of this meeting. Whatever you've got for us today, Lord, we say yes. And I just pray, Lord, that from the youngest to the oldest, when we finish the meeting today, every one of us would have known that we met with you, the living God. We say again, Lord, Father, you're the perfect dad. And you've only got perfect gifts for your children. And so we come now, Lord, to worship you, King of kings, Lord of lords. Amen.
Just think of those words. Can you sing it again, Di? Just sing it again. Christ. Just think of those words we've just been singing. Forever God is faithful. morning Lord as part of our service as we come Lord to remember those who sacrifice their lives those Lord who give they li- their lives so we could have life Lord we just think Lord of the millions of people in many wars Lord who have sacrificed their life so today 2021 we can have freedom where we are and Lord we just pray for families for loved ones, for friends who have lost their loved ones, their families, their friends in the wars, Lord. I'm just going to say a prayer, a prayer of remembrance this morning. And so, almighty and eternal God of truth and justice, that's who you are. We hold before you those men and women who have died in active service. Let's just take a second. Yes, Lord, we hold before you those men and women who have died in active service in World Wars 1 and 2. Lord, in Iraq and in Afghanistan and elsewhere. This morning, Lord, we come, Lord, and we honour their courage and we cherish their memory. May we, this morning, put our faith in your future. For you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. At 11 o'clock, we will have a minute's silence. Mike's just going to put a a shot on the screen for us. Thank you. After we have the minute silence, we'll be taking communion together, giving thanks for God that Jesus died for us. On your tables, you will find a little cup, and all the communion cups are in there. So please get those ready as we uh, as we stand in now. That'd be brilliant. So we thank you, Lord. You're a, an amazing God. Thank you, Jesus. Can you just sing forever you are faithful a couple of times more Dad, before 11 o'clock? Forever you are faithful. Thank you. Mm. <laughs>
Thank you, Lord. We sing praise to you this morning. We give you thanks. Let's just take a minute silence now, remembering those ones who gave their lives for us. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, as we remembered, Lord, those who gave their lives for us, we think of you this morning, that you gave your life for us, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. May we put our faith and trust in you, Lord. You are our future. It's all about you. And as part of our service this morning, we just give thanks for what you've done for us as we take the emblems, as we take the bread, as we take the cup. And again, we remind ourselves of those words of Paul to the Corinthian church when he said, For I pass unto you what I received from the Lord himself on the night when he was betrayed. The Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in peace and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed in my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you're announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Let's take the bread together. Let's take the cup together. Thank you, Jesus. To the king. Let's take our seats, thanks. Yvonne's going to come now and just tell us what's going on the next few weeks. Thanks, Yvonne. Wow, great to see everyone in the building this morning um, on this Remembrance Sunday and great to see everyone who's joined us online too as well. And can I just welcome our visitors today? We've got quite a few visitors, so can I just extend a warm welcome to you? And I'm sure you won't mind, she won't mind if I say a special welcome to Doreen today. <laughs> Good to have you with us today, Doreen. <laughs> Give us a little wave. Um, just in case you don't know, Doreen is Diane's mum, <laughs> which is really nice. So it's great to have you with us today, Doreen. So special welcome there. And great that we've got Di with us today. We're going to have a blessed morning, I'm sure. We've been blessed so far, but I think we've got some great things in store for us this morning. So Kids Zone is on Facebook as normal, but we'll also be having a Kids Zone slot here in the building after the notices. And then Wednesday and Thursday, we've got small groups, um, some online and some in person. If you need to know more about that, give us a nudge at the end of the service and we'll give you the info on that one. And then Thursday, we've got Chatter Tots as normal. And then next Sunday, we've got a visiting speaker. We've got Kevin Pete come in. Who knows Kevin Pete? <laughs> Once a few of us know Kevin Pete. So he's coming next week, and we've got a kids' um, church next week and youth cell. Um, this morning, if you want to make an offering, there's some white buckets, um, one this end of the building and one over that side of the building as well. So we're going to pray in a minute, but I just want to give you a little bit of an update. Um, great news, Dave. Dave Brand came home from hospital this week, which is absolutely fantastic. Nigel came home from hospital this week, but he's still very weak, so we need to continue to pray for him. And also Dave Morgan from Kefferney, who was meant to start his chemo this week, but didn't due to an infection. He's gone into hospital, so we need to pray for him as well. So are we okay just to stand for a minute while we pray, if that's okay? Um, I just had a verse this morning. I didn't know Di was going to be singing what she did, but the verse that I 
wanted to bring to you this morning was Psalm 136, verse 1. And it just says this. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love endures forever. And the message puts it like this. Thank God. He deserves your thanks. His love never quits. Isn't that fantastic? So let's just pray this morning. Let's give thanks to God. So Father God, we thank you on this special Remembrance Day. It's a day when we do really want to give thanks. And we thank you, Lord, that your love for us endures forever. No matter what sort of a week we've had or what sort of a day we're having, Lord, but your love is eternal. It never, ever ends. It never quits, as the message puts it. So we thank you, Lord God, as we're in your presence, Lord, that we're in a room that is filled with your love, Lord. And, and in that love, Lord, you can do anything. Nothing is impossible. And so we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence with us. And we just want to pray. We thank you for Dave Brand, that he's home from hospital. We pray you keep your hands upon him. We pray for full recovery, Lord, and just a blessing upon him and Lindsay at this time. Lord, we thank you that Nigel's home, and we just pray for him that you continue to give him the grace and the strength that he needs as, he's get, uh, as his body gets strong again, Lord. We pray that he will know complete peace, and Lord, we pray for his complete recovery, Lord God, and Lord, bless their family at this time too, Lord. And for Dave, Morgan, and Kevin Lee, we just pray, Lord, that you just minister to him too, Lord God, that he may know complete peace this morning, Lord, as he rests in you. We thank you for the medical team that are looking after these people, Lord, the medical people, and we just pray blessing upon them, that they would have the wisdom from above as they, you know, make decisions, Lord. And so we're just thankful this morning that we're here, Lord, and we just want to give you all the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. And if you take your seats, the um, uh, notices will come up on the screen. Brilliant. Kate is going to come now and the other kids. Give Kate a round of applause as she comes. Thanks, Kate. Over to you. Thanks, Steve, and thanks everyone for being here for church. Have you enjoyed your tasty pastries and goodies? On the is there any left? Don't forget, if there is any left, you can take that home with you. Good morning, especially if you've not been to our church before. It's really great to have you with us. My name's Kate. And as part of our church activities, a couple times a month, we have our kids' church and our youth cell. And they're out in the different parts of our building. But today, we're all together for our family breakfast or brunch, if you call it that. And we're going to be um, hearing some more from Diane. Diane's actually my mum. So how cool is it when you get to call your parents or like your grandparents by their first name? So hi, Diane. <laughs> and actually, I think um, some of our other family that are in Australia might be watching this morning. So if you can, can you muster up your best Australian accent? And after three, do a big good day. Was that all right? Was that all right? Okay. So one, two, three. Fab. That's especially for the Aussies if they're watching. How has your week been? Give me a thumbs up if it's been really good. Give me a medium if it's been okay. 
and give me a thumbs down if it's not been that great. Adults as well, how are you feeling today? Mixed bag, mixed bag there. I wonder what you've been up to this week as well. This week, has anybody had to wear a scarf or a hat because the weather's turning a bit cold? Has anyone had to wear a, a hat or a scarf this week? Few people have, yeah. Has anyone, ooh, wonder who this belongs to, been putting their wellies on this week because it's been a bit wet? I think you could fit five kids in that welly. Has anyone been so organized that they've been doing their Christmas shopping already this week? I knew there would be some hands here, very organized people. And my last one is, has anyone been playing an instrument this week? Maybe you play one all the time. Maybe you're a music teacher like Amy. Maybe you have been learning an instrument in school or you've picked up the guitar again at home. Well, we've seen Diane play on the keyboard today, haven't we? And she's going to be sharing some songs with us a little bit later as well. And music, singing, playing an instrument, drumming, rhythm, that's all an expression, an act of worship and praise to God. And that's one of the reasons that we gather together in our church building to be with other Christians that love God and want to worship and praise him together. But why do we worship God? And there'll be lots of different answers for lots of different people, I'm sure. Well, for me, one of the reasons I worship God in my music is because he is so great and he is the best example of love so much he even sent his son Jesus to the earth to walk around like you and I, to show people God's love. And he did it in two special ways. He did it through his attitude. Everyone say attitude. You're listening, that's great. And his actions, say actions. Fab. So we're going to watch a little video now that reminds us about some of the things that Jesus did on the earth through his attitudes and through his actions and how we might be able to join in. So have a little look on the screen. This is the story of Jesus. Awesome, I love this story. When Jesus was about 30 years old, he started his ministry. Cool, wait, what does that mean exactly? That means he started teaching people about God, preaching the good news and doing miracles. Gotcha. He traveled around all over the place, helping people everywhere he went. All day, every day, he taught, healed, gave, served, prayed for, and rescued people. Whoa, 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 slow down. You can't just blaze through that fast. Like, what kind of stuff are you talking about? Well, just to name a few, he healed lots of people that were sick, like a blind man that had never opened his eyes. Jesus healed him and he could see. Or another man that couldn't walk with the word, Jesus healed his body and the man got up and started dancing. Over and over and over, Jesus came across people that were hurting and sick, even ones that thought they would never get better, and Jesus restored them back to perfect health. Whoa, that's awesome. So he just healed people. No way. He did tons of other miracles for people. He took a little bit of food and multiplied it into enough to feed thousands of people. He walked on water and calmed a huge storm by speaking to it. He cast out demons from people, and he even raised people from the dead. Man, that's amazing. So that's all he did, huh? I mean, that's still pretty impressive. Actually, that's not even close to everything he did. The Bible says that Jesus did so many miracles and helped so many people that if you were to write down everything he did, you couldn't fit enough books on earth to contain it. Good grief. You're like exploding my mind right now. Jesus did that much for people? You bet. When we look at Jesus' time on earth, we see someone that didn't just tell people that he loved them. He didn't just think it. He showed them that he loved them by what he did. He didn't pass someone up just because he wasn't feeling it that day. He didn't heal people begrudgingly. He didn't look down on anyone that was in need. His attitude and his actions show us what he cared about. And the one thing that was always on his mind. Ooh, 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 let me guess. 
Hot Pockets. What? Yeah, like he's always thinking about him, like wishing he was heating one up, getting that cheese to bubble up like a little orange volcano. Uh, no, it wasn't Hot Pockets. Oh, wait a minute, sorry, I'm thinking of me. Hot Pockets are always on my mind. Scratch that, let me try again. I was gonna say, there was one thing always on Jesus' mind. Loving people. There you go. Even when it sometimes wasn't all that easy, Jesus still did everything he could to help people. And after years of traveling around like that, helping, healing, and teaching people, the time came for him to do the ultimate act of love. He gave his life. Jesus loved us so much that he took the punishment that people deserved and died on the cross for our sin. Man, talk about an amazing life. But that's not how the story ends, right? I mean, it, it can't just be over just like that. Of course not. After three days, Jesus rose from the dead and he's alive today. Oh, like right now? You bet. Jesus conquered sin and he defeated death. And that's the most amazing thing of all that shows us how much he loves people. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can be a part of God's family and know him like never before. Man, you weren't kidding when you said that everything Jesus did was about loving people. Totally. But here's the thing. There's one more part to this story. After Jesus rose from the dead, he visited his disciples and gave them a very important command. Go and heat up some Hot Pockets, but save one for me because I'm super hungry. No, he told them to follow his example and be just like him. Jesus said to go into all the world and share the good news, to love people like he did. But was that like just for the disciples back then though? No way, the Bible tells us to do the very same thing today. Jesus' life is a perfect example of what our life should look like and what we should do. We should love people like he did, but not just think it or talk about it, go and do something. Right, how'd you say it? What was that thing you were saying? Uh, our apple dudes and axes? Close. Our attitude and actions are how we show people the love of Jesus. Just do things the way Jesus would do them. When you love others and go out of your way to care for them, that's showing them Jesus. See how that works? Mmm, so when a kid at school like doesn't have very much food at lunch, I could like share some of mine and that would be showing him Jesus. Yep. Gotcha. Or if my mom tells me to clean my room and I do it without throwing a fit and make sure I do a good job, that's showing her Jesus too? Okay, all right, I'm getting it now. Great. I'm catching your drift. What? I'm cashing what you're checking. Stop. I'm snacking what you're packing. All right, that's enough. Just remember, as you go through the journey of your life, you can always share the good news with the people around you, just like Jesus did, with your attitude and your actions. Can I do one more? <sighs> sure. I'm itching what you're scratching. Okay, I'm done. The end. So if you have never heard about Jesus before, that is a whistle-stop tour um, of some of the things that Jesus did when he was on the earth. And everything that he did was to show us, to show people what God is like and God is love. And Jesus went about his days thinking about others with his attitude, so that's how he felt in his heart. So can everyone point to your heart? I think it's sort of around there. Just check, it's, it's still going. With his attitude and his actions. So how he felt about people and how he responded to people, the things that he did for them. And as we start to think even more about Christmas, I've said it again, we are preparing. We're thinking about something called Advent. And as we think on to Christmas and all the fun that it will hopefully bring, we can also be reminded of just some of the things that Jesus did on the earth and why we're celebrating and gathering together here in church and at Christmas time as well. I'm going to pass back to Steve in a moment, but just to remind you that we'll have Kids Church next week, and we're going to start learning something to be involved in our carol service on the Sunday morning this year on the 19th, and the youth and the kids are going to be involved in that. And also, just to remind you, if you are new today um, and you have got younger ones like crash toddler age, we do have our drop-in crash at the back if you need to use that at any time. Great. Steve. Thanks, Kate. Give a round of applause. It gives me great pleasure this morning to welcome Kate's mum, Doreen's daughter. It's Di. Give a round of applause. Thanks, Di. Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, 
Well, it's, it really is a pleasure to be here, and it's a joy to share with you some of the songs that I felt God has given me over the years, um, and just to uh, be in your company. I think it's wonderful that we can do this after so long of not being able to you know, come together like this and having to be separate and keep our distance from one another. So it's really nice, isn't it, to be able to have uh, this cafe church this morning. Um, so I just want to share a couple of things with you um, before I sing as well. Just uh, a bit of a testimony, I suppose. Um, I think when I was about five, um, I remember being packed off to church. And I have a vague recollection of um, wanting Jesus to be my friend and, and kind of having this awareness of Jesus. And I know when I was eight, um, I went along to the... Odeon Cinema as it was then in London Road, going back a bit isn't it, um, and there was a screening of Billy Graham um, preaching uh, to thousands and thousands of people and I felt really moved by what he said and I just wanted to know Jesus for myself, I wanted to, to say to Jesus I, I want you to be with me, I want you to be part of me, I want you in my life, and I say it was only eight, um, but I just felt a very real sense of wanting to know Jesus, wanting Jesus to be my friend. Um, and I went down to the front, uh, the Odin Cinema, and was taken into a room, and um, I prayed with a with a lady there, and I uh, gave my life to Jesus when I was eight. At home, we had a piano, so I'd often, oops, I'd often uh, sit at the piano. And um, I think because we were churchgoers, it was a case of practicing hymns and playing hymns. But, you know, some of the hymns are great, aren't they? Some of the words of the, of the hymns are fantastic. Um, so I used to sit there and have a go at playing the piano. I used to play by ear. I think my mum sent me to uh, piano lessons. Um, but, you know, I really struggled and I found it hard. Um, so I, I didn't actually pursue that and I just, in the end, I thought it's too much and I wasn't a very confident person, didn't do any exams and I, I kind of packed it up after a couple of years, I was, think it was about 11 at the time. And it wasn't until in my early 20s that I started um, writing songs, which I felt were um, coming from my own experience, my life experience. Um, what I was going through, things that uh, had happened, things that were going on. Um, but also, um, as time went on, um, I'd get songs for, for other people. Um, initially, when I started uh, songwriting, it was very much um, songs that I thought were just for me. And because they were about my experience or what I was maybe going through at the time, they weren't necessary you know, for anybody else to hear. And i just keep them to myself. Um, but over time, I felt like God was saying, no, actually, you need to share these songs. You need to share them. Um, and then over a period of time, um, people would invite me, say, oh, could you sing? Uh, you know, could you sing at our wedding? Um, or could you sing at Christmas? Um, and then it's been a privilege to sing for um, the dedication of my grandchildren. That has been really something special. Um, where I felt, you know, God has given me the words. I haven't gone away and thought, right, what can I say? What can I say? But, you know, the words have just come like that. And um, I've been able to, to sing um, and, and just give thanks to the Lord for that gift, for that ability to do that, you know. Um, so anyway, I just want to sing a song now, if that's okay. Um, just to share with you that, you know, God has been in my life since I was a little girl. Um, and that I haven't been on my own in this life. I think sometimes we find that we, f we get those situations where we do feel lonely, where we do feel um, that no one's with us or maybe no one's fully understanding what we're going through. But um, I, know, I know that's not the case. I know God has said that he will never leave us or forsake us and he's always with us and we can't escape from his presence and I think that's fantastic and I think even here this morning 
you know, that Jesus, I can just picture Jesus kind of walking around the room, sitting at the table with us, how are you doing? Are you enjoying that? You know, or just pass us that cup. You know, because he's like that, you know, he's so intimate and he's so personal with us. Okay. heard someone say that life um, isn't meant to be a treadmill but it's a path who feels like the life's been a bit of a treadmill I think I think COVID has really kind of shook that up a little bit hasn't it maybe it's made us realize that maybe our lives were a bit of a treadmill that we were so used to doing things in a certain way you know day in day out and God's saying you know that his life with him is an adventure. It's not meant to be a treadmill. I just want to share a little testimony um, of something that happened to our family while at the very beginning of uh, lockdown, really. Um, my husband and I uh, were both uh, self-employed, and we found right at the beginning of lockdown um, that we weren't able to uh, go and earn. So it was a little bit of, little bit of a, a kind of worrying time right at the beginning. And I'm sure many people were in that situation as well, where things weren't um, going quite the way we'd expect, um, and finances for some people had been affected. Well, right at the beginning, we, we just prayed and said, God, you know, um, we, need, we need finances, we need to pay our bills, um, you know, we need provision. And funnily enough, a lady uh, called me up, um, she'd never been to our house, 
um, but she called me up and said, I've been praying for you. And um, I've, I've felt like God's given me a bit of a picture. And God does that sometimes when he speaks to us, doesn't he? He gives us pictures and thoughts and images in our head. And so I've got a picture of you and, and Alan, who's my hubby, who's here as well. Um, a picture of you two under this big table. Now we're at home in our kitchen. Our, our kitchen table is pretty big. So I thought, oh, that's interesting. So and I've got a picture of you two under your table. She said, but then on the table, plates started appearing she said, and then there was one, and then another, then another, then another, gold and silver plates until the table was actually covered. And I thought, wow, it's very interesting. And as I thought and meditated on this picture, it was a, a symbol of God's protection as we were under the table, but also God's provision um, that he was going to provide. And he was saying to us, you know, I'm going to look after you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to provide for you. And within a matter of days, we were contacted um, by some people and said, oh, you know, we're delivering food in the area. We've got food bags. I uh, just thought you might need, um, you need some food. Oh, that's great. Thanks very much. Open the door and there's like two massive carrier bags of food. And this happened like week on, week, week in, week out until our cupboards were actually, you know, sort of bursting at the seams. And it's just how faithful God is to be, you know, to, to care for us like that um, and to look after us. And then within a month or so, um, our work picked up and, and my hubby, his work picked up and, and we were able to meet our own, uh, you know, needs in that way that the finances were coming in again. Um, but it was just a testimony that, you know, God is faithful, isn't he? God does care about the little details. You know, they always say that saying that, you know, the devil's in the detail. Well, if you look into that saying, it actually was um, originally that God is in the detail. Let's not give the enemy credit here. God is in the detail. And I know over my life, God has, has kept me through all kinds of things that have happened. Sometimes things haven't been so great. And that's when you really have to lean into God and push into God and experience his goodness and his faithfulness and his presence. And other times, life's great, isn't it? And sometimes you tend to forget that, you know, God's there too. You know, that he is, the, is he's a good father. He's the author of God. That's good, sorry. And that's where good comes from because he, he is good and he is love. Um, so, yeah, so anybody here today who maybe doesn't know God in that way, um, I'd really encourage you to kind of speak to someone and just reach out because God does want to make himself known to you. He does want to, you know, to experience that love that Kate was talking about before, that he, that he is love. Um, I think I will sing a song called Follow Me. Um, and it's just about following the way of God, that he is truth that he is love, that he is life. Be your light 
Wasn't that fantastic? Give another round of applause. Thanks, Di. Wow. Well, it's been a great morning, hasn't it? So we're all going to finish off with a song together. So shall we stand? If you guys are home, I hope you've, been, you've enjoyed it as, 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 as much as we have this morning as well. And so Di's going to lead us now into singing a song together. Let's just worship God together. God's faithfulness, the goodness of God.
Yes, Lord, we can declare all our days of our lives you've been faithful. Should you just finish off with that chorus again? All my life you have been all faithful. Just thank you. you have been been great seeing you this morning have a great afternoon lord bless you all bye to those at home bye to you in the building have a great time bye now give diane of applause thanks di brilliant see you